Join Kids Hat Family. Our gardener is so rude. I am never going to talk to him again. Maybe you should try to be nicer to him, Tofu. Perhaps he has no friends and feels lonely. Yes, he doesn't talk to anyone. Hence, he has no friends. Why would anyone talk to someone who doesn't talk to them? That's not what Heidi did. Who is Heidi? Heidi There lived a little girl called Heidi. She lived with her aunt in the village. Once it happened that Heidi's aunt had to go to the big city for work. She would be gone for a long time. So she decided to leave Heidi with her grandfather who lived alone on the mountain. Heidi's grandfather, a carpenter named Arm, wasn't a friendly person because of some experience in his past. He didn't like to talk to anyone and that is why he lived all the way up in the mountains. And now Heidi had to live with him. Bye bye Heidi! Be a good girl. Bye, Auntie. Hello. My name is Heidi. Mm -hmm. Heidi waited a while, hoping that her grandfather would talk to her. When she realized he wasn't going to, she decided not to disturb him and instead she went out to see the mountainside. She had never seen such vast lands of green. She fell in love with her new home immediately. She lay down next to a bed of daffodils under the open sky and smiled to herself. That's when she heard the goats with bells around their neck. <laughs> oh, hello. Where did you come from? I brought them here to feed, like I do every day. Where did you come from? Hello, my name is Heidi. I have come here to stay with my grandfather. Hello, Heidi. My name is Peter. Old Grandpa Arm is your grandfather. He often helps us with furniture and maintaining the barn. In turn, my grandmother bakes bread for him. You live here with your grandma, is it? Uh, can I meet her? Yes, come with me. And so Heidi went with her new friend to his house to meet his grandmother. Peter's grandmother was very loving. And although she was blind, she loved to talk and cook. She was very happy when Peter told her about Heidi. Oh, that's wonderful. Come here, dear Heidi. And give me a hug. Are you hungry? Well, come. I will make you some special soup. Heidi spent the rest of the day at Peter's house and learned how to make special soup from his grandmother. Heidi asked her if, like Peter, she too could call her Granny and she was delighted when she agreed. 
When it was evening, she said goodbye to them and went back to her grandfather's house. When she reached there, he was still working in his workshop. So Heidi went into the house. Sometime later, Heidi called out to him. Dinner time, Grandfather. Come, let's eat together. Old Arm looked up in surprise. No one had made dinner for him in decades. He closed his workshop for the day, washed up and went to eat. Heidi had made the lovely soup she had learned from Granny. They ate in silence. And although her grandfather liked the soup very much, he didn't say anything. When dinner was done and the kitchen had been cleaned up, they both went out in the yard and sat under the stars quietly. After some time, Heidi started feeling sleepy and so she kissed Arm goodnight and went to sleep. Arm had not experienced so much love in many years and so he sat there with tears in his eyes for a long time. Next morning, by the time Heidi got up, her grandfather was already in his workshop. She decided to go and be with him. Good morning, Grandfather. Hmm. Heidi knew she wouldn't get an answer, so she decided to make herself busy. She swept the workshop, filled fresh water in Arm's jar, and to surprise, kissed him and went out to feed the hen. When it was about afternoon, she served a lunch of mashed potatoes which she had learnt to make from her aunt. Later she went to Peter's house to spend time with Granny and returned in the evening to serve dinner. This went on for many days. Every morning and night she would kiss her grandfather on the cheek and wish him. She would clean his workshop and fill fresh water in his jar. All this love and care that Heidi gave him changed Arm's behaviour. He loved having Heidi around and enjoyed it very much when Peter and Granny came by to visit her. One day, upon Heidi's insistence, he even took her to the village. They bought a pair of shoes for Heidi. On the way back, they bought candy fluffs. Throughout the trip, Arm laughed and played with Heidi. All the villagers were surprised to see this change in the old carpenter. Two years went by and Heidi and Arm were very happy in each other's company. Till one day, Heidi's aunt returned. 
she wanted to take Heidi with her to the big city. The man whose office she worked in had a daughter, Clara, who couldn't walk. Clara always needed a wheelchair to go anywhere. Hence, she had no friends. Clara's father wanted Heidi to be Clara's friend. Grandfather, tell her I do not wish to go. I want to live here with you. But Arm didn't say anything. He knew that Heidi would have a much better life in the big city. And so Heidi left her grandfather, Peter, Granny and the mountainside to live in the big city. She was straight away taken to the mansion where Clara lived. There she met Clara's father. He was a very kind and loving gentleman who loved Clara very much but often had to travel a lot for business. During these times, he left Clara in the care of her grandmother and a rather stern housekeeper. Hello Heidi, I am Clara's father. I wanted to thank you for coming here. I am sure you will like living here with Clara. If you ever need anything, please let me know. Now come, I will take you to Clara's room. When they entered Clara's room, Heidi saw a beautiful girl, maybe two years elder to Heidi, sitting on a wheelchair. She was very pretty, but she was frail and seemed sad. The housekeeper pushed the wheelchair forward towards Heidi. Clara, this is Heidi. She will live with us now. I will see you both in the evening now. Bye-bye. Saying so, he and Heidi's aunt left to attend their business. For a while, Heidi didn't know what to say to Clara. My friend Peter has many goats. Sometimes I can't make out whether he controls the goats or they control him. Hearing this, Clara also broke into giggles and Heidi immediately knew that they were going to be very good friends. She started spending her whole day with Clara. She would tell her many tales of the mountains while Clara would tell her about the different cities she had stayed in after her mother had passed away. While the housekeeper was very stern and always stopped the girls from enjoying themselves too much, Clara's grandmother was very nice. She even taught Heidi how to read. Everybody who met Clara now noted how happy she looked. One day, the girls went out to the market. As Heidi pushed the wheelchair forward, she saw a vendor selling daffodils. She was immediately reminded of home. Her grandfather, Peter and Granny. When they came back from the market, Clara asked Heidi, Wasn't today fun, Heidi? What do you think of my new bracelet? <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. And so it went from that day. Heidi didn't want to play or sing with Clara 
and she wouldn't read with Clara's grandmother. She wouldn't even eat unless was forced to. She would just keep doing her work quietly. She missed her home terribly. And her heart broke every time she looked out of the window and saw buildings and towers instead of mountains and sky. This went on till one day she felt terribly ill. Clara's father called the doctor right away. Well, I am afraid she is homesick. She misses home. No medicine or treatment can make her better unless she goes back. I will immediately make arrangements to send her home. True to his word, Clara's father made sure that Heidi was back in the mountain at her grandfather's house in two days. Just the news of going back home had made Heidi feel better. And when she reached her grandfather's home, she ran to him and hugged him. Even Arm was very happy to have Heidi back. I am never going away, Grandfather. You don't have to. Grandfather, this is Clara. She is my friend from the city. She has come to stay with us for a few days. And that is Clara's father. As the two men shook hands, Peter came over. The children were very excited to see each other. You must be Peter. Heidi has told me all about you. You must take me to your granny. Yes, yes. Come, I will push your chair. Granny would love to meet you. After some time, Clara's father said goodbye to everyone. He would come back in few weeks to take Clara back to the city. The children waved him goodbye. In the next few days, the children had a lot of fun. Peter and Heidi would take Clara along with them everywhere. Peter would pluck fresh fruits for them. And they even showed her how to milk a cow. With the good food, air, environment of the mountainside, Clara grew stronger. So much that she even learned to walk by herself. Soon it was time for Clara's father to come and take her away. When he came, she surprised him by walking up to his carriage. Oh my darling, I am so happy. As they left, everybody was happy. There was no sadness in anyone's heart. Bye-bye, I will visit you soon. I will too. Goodbye, take care. So you see Tofu? When you are kind and loving towards someone, you can change their whole life. Yes, Tia. Thank you for teaching me this valuable lesson. Perhaps I will take some chocolates for the gardener. Yay! We won! But why does Ron keep passing the ball to others? He's the best player on the team. 
He could make more goals if he just takes the ball all the way by himself. No Tofu, to win you always need a team. Every player is equally important on the team. Come, I will tell you a story about the importance of teamwork. Once upon a time, a girl called Dorothy lived in Kansas City. She was playing with her best friend, a dog named Toto, when a scary cyclone came their way. Dorothy called out to Toto. Toto, hurry! We have to get to the basement. But before they could reach the basement, the cyclone lifted their house up and blew it away. After some time, it fell somewhere with a thud. When Dorothy stepped out of the house, she saw the house had landed on someone. Toto, help me! Who is she? The house has landed on her! I I'm so sorry! Just then, Dorothy and Toto heard people behind them rejoicing. They were the munchkins. Thank you, thank you! You have just saved us from the evil witch of the east! You have saved us all! Just then, another witch appeared. She was the good witch. Hello, Dorothy. You have done a great deed by saving all the munchkins. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you. Could you please tell me how to go back to Kansas City? That's where I used to live. I can't do that. But I think the Wizard of Oz can help you with that. Just follow the yellow brick road. It will lead you straight to him. But before you go, take these red slippers that the evil witch of the east had. You might need them. Dorothy thanked the good witch, took the slippers and made her way on the yellow brick road with Toto. She had only walked a bit when she came across a scarecrow. Hello, I am the scarecrow. I have everything I want except a brain. My head is only filled with hay. Hello, scarecrow. I am going to the Wizard of Oz. Why don't you come with me? He might be able to help you. And so Dorothy was joined by the scarecrow. They had walked a few miles when they met the tin woodcutter. I want a heart. When my maker made me, he gave me everything but forgot to give me a heart. I wish he hadn't forgotten that. We are going to the Wizard of Oz. We are going to ask him for a way for Dorothy to get back to her home and for brains for me. Why don't you come with us? And so the tin woodcutter also joined them. They had walked for some time when they heard Toto barking. They turned around to see 
that a lion had attacked Toto. Get away from my dog, you nasty lion! The lion whimpered and ran away to a corner. Oh no! You aren't a brave lion at all, are you? No, I have no courage. I wish I had some. We are going to the Wizard of Oz. We will ask him for a brain for the scarecrow, a way for Dorothy to get back home and a heart for me. Come with us. We will ask him for courage for you. The lion agreed and they all continued on the yellow brick road. They kept following the road and reached the Emerald City. They knocked on its big gates. A guard appeared. The wizard doesn't meet anyone, but he has agreed to meet all of you. And so all the friends went to meet the wizard. They told him how and why they had come to meet him. Thank you, Dorothy, for freeing the lands from the evil witch of the East. But I will grant all your wishes when you free us from the evil witch of the West too. The friends agreed to the wizard's terms and left to find the evil witch of the West. But the evil witch of the West had heard about what had happened to the evil witch of the East. She also knew about Dorothy and her friends plan to kill her. She planned an attack on them. She sent a pack of her scariest wolves to stop them. The tin woodcutter stepped forward. This is a job for me. Everyone, stay back. The woodcutter hacked at the wolves with his axe till they all ran away. The wolves had just left when the skies became dark and many crows started coming down to peck at them all. This time, the scarecrow stepped forward and scared all the crows away. Next, the evil witch sent flying monkeys. Before anyone could do anything, the monkeys grabbed them all and took them to the evil witch's castle. So, you've come to kill me, huh? How will you do that? The woodcutter is lying in a pile over the stones. I have emptied the scarecrow and strapped the cowardly lion to pull my cocks. Oh, you are so evil! What a horrible person you are! Saying so, Dorothy grabbed the bucket of water that was lying there and threw the water at the witch. Oh no! You threw water over me? I am going to shrink and melt! Help me! I'm melting! Oh my god! I'm melting! Help me! And so the evil witch of the west melted away. As that happened, all her slaves became free. They repaired the woodcutter, filled the scarecrow with hay and released the lion.
Dorothy and her friends went back to the Emerald City. The Wizard of Oz welcomed them and granted the wishes of the Scarecrow, the Woodcutter and the Lion. What about my wish? How will I get back home? You don't need me for that. You had the power all along. Just click your heels together thrice and tell the slippers where you want to go. They will take you there. Though Dorothy was excited to go home, she was sad to leave her friends. She said a tearful goodbye to them. Then she picked up Toto in her arms and clicked her heels together three times and told her slippers to take her home. So you see Tofu? If all the friends hadn't worked together, they would have not been able to defeat the evil witch of the West. Hmm, yes Tia, I now understand the importance of a team. Tofu, wolves are known to be clever and cunning. My childhood memories with wolves are quite interesting. Especially the story of the wolf and the seven little goats. The wolf and the seven little goats? Wow! I haven't heard that one. Tell me the story, Tia. The wolf and the seven little goats. Once upon a time, there lived a mama goat and her seven little kids. Theirs was a happy little home. All the seven little kids used to play in the meadows, into the wild with the butterflies and birds singing along. Their days used to go in complete harmony and bliss. Until one day, a big black wolf noticed these little kids playing in the meadow. Ha ha ha! Such an easy treat they are for me. I haven't eaten since ages. I'm sure these would make delicious lamb chops for my dinner tonight. He waited for the moment when the mother goat would leave her kids alone patiently hiding in the bushes. Children, I'm going to the market to buy bread and cookies for you. I'll be back by evening. Just make sure you remain conscious of this big bad wolf. But mommy, how would we know if it's not you? The wretched wolf can easily be recognized with his hoarse voice and black feet. Don't open the door or else you little ones would get into danger. Don't worry, mommy. We would take care of ourselves. The mother goat went off to the market and the kids made doubly sure with the locks on the door. After making sure that they are safe in their little home, off they went to play when suddenly there was a knock on the door. Hello, my children. Open the door. Your mother is back. Hearing the voice, the youngest one scampered to the door. Mommy, Mommy, she's back. In no time, the eldest one ran to catch his little sibling. No, it's not our Mommy. She hasn't got such a rough voice. And then, looking at the door, the eldest kid shouted back saying, Go away, you big bad wolf! 
A mother doesn't have such a hoarse voice. Hearing this, the wolf got annoyed and ran to get a box of chalk as he had heard that this would make his voice as soft as that of a baby. But kids, you shouldn't do this at any cost as this would only make your tummy ache badly. So off he went and cut off the whole box of chalk. Knocking on the door again, he said, Hello kids, your mother is back. Look what I have got for you. Cookies, breads and ginger ale. Oh, that sounds like a mother. Should we open the door now? But look down there. A mother has not got black feet. This is surely the wolf. Go away, you big bad wolf. A mother has not got black feet, but beautiful white feet. Hearing this, the wolf ran to the miller and jumped into the mountain of white dough. He was all white from head to toe. Running back to the house, he knocked again and said, Kids, your mother is back. Open the dough. That sounds like a mother and also the feet are white. We should open the door now. Not knowing what danger awaits them, all the kids ran to the door and opened it. But just to see who was standing there, the big bad wolf gave a loud laugh and brushed off his white powder. Hello kids, are you ready to become my feast tonight? The kids ran here and there to save their lives. One went inside the kettle, the other in the oven. One looked for a place under the bed and the other tried saving itself by hiding in the pot. The youngest one was so tiny that he managed to hide himself inside the clock case. The wolf, having no mercy, started taking them out from their hidings. One by one, he rolled them in a ball and gulped them up. Ah, there goes the first one. Oh, the second one is under the bed. Here you go. In no time, he ate all the kids except for the youngest one who was hiding in the clock case. With his tummy full, he burped and left the home. When the mother returned, she was shocked to see the door open and waited for the biggest nightmare that might have come true. The house was all upside down. The crockery was broken. The curtains were torn. The chair was broken. And the kids were nowhere to be found. She cried for them. <laughs> children! Oh children! Where are you? At that very moment, the youngest one came out of the clock case and hugged his mother crying and howling. Oh, mother, the bad wolf disguised us by sounding and looking like you. He ate up all my brothers and sisters. What will we do now? Don't worry. Let's go and look for him. They went out searching for the wolf. His tummy was so filled that he slept off in a meadow near the house itself. His snores were so loud that even the branches of the tree were shuddering. The mother goat very quietly went near him and asked her youngest kid to get scissors, thread and a needle. Off he went to get them. The mother goat very quietly slit open his tummy and took out all her kids from his tummy. 
They then filled up his tummy with stones as big as balls and then she stitched the tummy with the thread and the needle. The wolf had such a huge feast after so long and he slept all night. In the morning when he got up, he was so thirsty that he tried running to the well. But his belly was so heavy that he could hardly walk. He picked up his belly and managed to reach the well. But the moment he bent down to drink water, he couldn't handle the weight and fell in the well. The kids were looking at all of this from their window and shouted happily. Mommy, mommy, the wolf has died. Now we can play freely outside without any fear. And they lived happily ever after. Now that was one cunning wolf. But Tofu, if you be bad to others, bad happens to you too. Always remember that. Yeah, Tia. Good for others. Tofu, what goes around comes around. If you do good, good will come back to you. And if you do bad, bad will come back to you. What do you mean? Let me tell you the story of a little boy called Pinocchio. Pinocchio Once, there lived an old carpenter called Geppetto. He had no family and was quite lonely. Since he was quite poor, he would find leftover wooden logs and create something new out of them. One night, he found a large wooden log and took it home. Throughout the night, Geppetto worked on the log. And carved a young boy out of it. By the time he was done with it, it was morning. My, my, what a beautiful boy I have made. I wish he had a heart. Then he could be my son and I would call him Pinocchio. A good fairy who knew that Geppetto was a very nice man overheard him and suddenly the wooden boy spoke up. Hello! Geppetto was surprised but overjoyed. He hugged Pinocchio and told him that from that day he was Geppetto's son. Geppetto arranged for Pinocchio to go to school. To buy him his books, he sold off his dear chisel. Now you can go to school like a real boy. One morning, as Pinocchio was going to school, the evil puppet master stopped him. The puppet master wanted to own Pinocchio so he could use him to earn lots of money. Hello Pinocchio, do you want to go to the fun island? It is a wonderful magical place where you can become a real boy. 
Pinocchio was overjoyed at the idea of going to Fun Island. He quickly started walking with the puppet master. The good fairy who had been watching over Pinocchio suddenly appeared. Seeing her, the evil puppet master ran away leaving Pinocchio alone. Where are you going Pinocchio? To school, good fairy. Just as Pinocchio said the lie, his wooden nose grew longer. That isn't the way to the school, Pinocchio. Afraid that he had been caught, the boy decided to lie again. It is a new route. With the second lie, Pinocchio's nose grew even longer. Now he was very sad and started crying. <laughs> I am sorry. I won't go to the fun island. I will go to school. Seeing how sorry Pinocchio was, the good fairy did her magic and turned his nose into its normal size again. Pinocchio thanked her and dashed off to school. Once he reached school, he told all his friends about the fun island. All his friends decided to go and see this magical place. What they didn't know was that the magic in Fun Island was evil. It turned little boys into donkeys. Oh no! We are in trouble! Everybody, run from here! Just as the boys were figuring a way out of the island, Pinocchio saw Geppetto swimming towards the island. He had been looking out for Pinocchio all day. But to Pinocchio's horror, before Geppetto could reach him, a whale swallowed him up. To save his father, Pinocchio also jumped into the sea and went straight into the whale's stomach. There he saw Geppetto. Pinocchio, my son! Father, are you okay? How will we get out of here now? Well, we must tickle the whale from inside till it throws us out. And they started tickling the whale's stomach. Soon the whale sneezed and threw both of them out. Pinocchio helped his father and all his friends to get back to the village. The good fairy had been watching him all this time. Pinocchio, I have seen what a good boy you have been. Jumping into the sea to save your father like that. Hence, I am giving you a heart and making you a real boy. Pinocchio and Geppetto were overjoyed. They hugged each other and thanked the fairy as Pinocchio really turned into a real boy. Do you still think that doing good is a waste of time, Tofu? Oh no, never dear. From now on, I will always do good to others. Boo. Stop throwing snowballs at me! Stop! <laughs> but that's how I play with snow. I love making snowballs. Tofu, it's five days to Christmas. Come, I'll help you make a snowman. No, we made a snowman last Christmas also. Harry will be upset then, Tofu. Don't you want Harry the snowman to be happy? Harry? The snowman? Who is he? 
I'll tell you Harry's story if you help me make a big, lovely snowman. Okay, Tia. Tell me the story and let's start making Harry also. Harry the Happy Snowman Five days before Christmas Eve, Santa was working out in his gym, practicing his technique of dropping down through chimneys without getting stuck. <laughs> Santa has quite a possibility of that. Suddenly, one of his reindeers, Donda, came running in. He seemed rather distressed and worried. Santa, Santa! Harry the snowman has run away! I am panicking! Calm down, Donda. There is nothing to worry about. I will personally sort out Harry's problems and bring him back home safe and sound. Donda! Alert the elves and begin a search whilst I head back to my sleigh. Santa took off to the skies to find Harry. One place, as he looked down, he saw Harry alone in the snow, heading away from Santa's village. Harry! Harry! Can you hear me? Santa pulled down and landed just beside Harry. But Harry ignored Santa and kept walking. Jump aboard, Harry! Get back in! Harry! But Harry kept on walking away. Santa shouted again. Harry, please listen to me. Talk to Santa. Harry slowly turned around, looked at Santa with tears in his eyes. Harry, my dear, there comes a point in everybody's life when you feel like running away. But that is not the answer. That's not the right thing to do. Please tell Santa your problems. Harry looked at Santa and broke down. Oh, <laughs> no one ever listens to me. No one has time for me. Why me? I am just a stupid, worthless snowman. Nobody loves me. Harry, my boy. You are not worthless. Dry your eyes, wipe your face. Come, I want to show you how important you are. Jump aboard, Harry. Ho, ho, ho. Harry looked at Rudolph. He had his head hung low. Rudolph, my boy, take to the skies, I ordered. Let's prove to Harry how important he really is. And off we go, ho, ho, ho. As they traveled around the world, Santa showed Harry millions of snowmen, all built by children having fun with the help of their family and friends. Look, Harry, building snowmen bring people together. Harry, imagine a Christmas without a snowman. It'll be incomplete. No fun. Imagine our family without you. 
Rudolph, take us home. I command. Let's go. While the mood changed in the sleigh and everybody was happy, they approached the North Pole. Look, Harry. They looked down from the sleigh and could see written in the snow in huge letters. Welcome home, Harry. We love you. Everybody from Santa's village was there too to welcome Harry back home. This made Harry so happy. Everyone clapped for Santa. Hmm. Harry could have made a big mistake by running away, but that is not the answer. Just talk to someone, and you'll find the ones who have time for you and who truly care. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Tia. Merry Christmas, Harry. We all love you. Always be happy. Now go inside and get some carrots. Let's give Harry a big nose. Let me call all my friends to play and tell them to make more snowman, more friends for Harry. Isn't that John and his older brother? Yes, that's them. Look at that. He is really troubling his brother. Oh, I think John is in big trouble. I'm sure his brother is going to give him a big scolding. I don't think so. Why not? Didn't you see how he was troubling his brother? There is no way he's going to stop unless his brother scolds him. Don't decide on that till you've heard the story of the wind and the sun. A long time ago, the wind and the sun were just talking when the wind said something strange to the sun. You do know that I am more powerful than you, don't you? Don't be arrogant, my friend. But the wind got offended. I am not being arrogant, I am being truthful. If you don't believe me, let's have a competition right now. The sun did not want to compete with his friend, but the wind left him with no choice. Reluctantly, he agreed. Okay, my friend, let's have a competition. Just then, a young man was walking on the road below them. He was wearing a beautiful scarf and a handsome coat. See that man below? Whoever can get the scarf and the coat off him wins. Okay, wind. You go ahead first. And so the wind blew at the man. The man's scarf moved a bit and his coat front flapped a little. I was just beginning. I will show the man some more of my power now. Now the wind blew a little more strongly. The man's scarf and coat front started flapping more in the wind. The wind grew fiercer and blew more wildly at him.
The man's calf almost left him but he caught it and tied it around his neck properly. The wind blew at the man with all his power and anger. But it only made the man wrap his calf and coat around him more tightly. He started feeling so cold with the wind blowing at him that he wrapped his arms around his legs and sat down by the road. The wind failed to get his calf and coat off. I have still not lost. If my power and anger couldn't do the job, you surely won't be able to do it either. Let us see. I think you have frozen the poor man. Maybe he could use some warmth. And so the sun gently smiled a bit at the man. Immediately, the man started feeling better. He straightened up and the color returned to his cheeks. He got up and started walking his way again. Is that it? Is that all you will do? Smile at him? The son ignored his friend and smiled at the man a little bit more. The man became more comfortable and walked his way faster. Watch what happens now. Now the son gave the man an even bigger smile. As the sun's smile grew bigger, the man started feeling warmer and warmer. Finally, he could take it no more and started sweating. He slowly took his scarf off. Oh no! At last, the sun's warmth became so much for the man that he took off his coat and flung it aside. The sun had won the competition. I am sorry, I underestimated the effect of gentleness. I thought only power could make things happen in the world, but I was wrong. Oh, don't worry my friend. Why don't you blow at him gently so his sweat can vanish? The wind did so while the sun continued to smile at him lightly. The man went on his way enjoying a pleasant day. Wow Tia, that's a wonderful way to be with people. Yes, there are better ways of changing things than a show of anger and power. I'm so glad you are my elder sister, Tia. If ever I do something wrong, I know you will correct me without scolding me. Well, looks like John also has a great brother. See, he's no longer troubling his brother. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.